Okay, welcome back to another episode of Goodread. I'm going to jump right into a case. A 72-year-old male presenting with weakness and ongoing GI upset arrived at the emergency department via EMS, and while he was getting the work up there in the emergency department, this was the initial 12-lead EKG. I recommend, if you need to, hit your pause button, try to look and see what different abnormalities you guys see, and then we're going to move on. So as the patient was getting monitored, Alarm started going off in the nurse's station, and we look, and the patient went into a run of torsades. We can see that it's torsades. We see this kind of waxing and waning pattern here to the run of VTAC, and that's typically um, very characteristic of torsades. Now, it's very, very important. A lot of this good reads is going to be about nomenclature, and I think a lot of people get confused with torsades. And so torsades is just a subcategory of polymorphic VTAC. And so in order to diagnose somebody with torsades, we need to see an underlying 12 lead. And what we need to see is a prolonged QT interval. So with a prolonged QT interval and the patient going to a run of polymorphic VTAC, that is considered torsades de point. It's a French term. On the other hand, if we can see an underlying 12 lead and there's a normal QT interval or no prolonged QT interval, this is actually most likely a result of acute coronary syndrome or cardiac ischemia. And so a lot of times, and the issue is, is in EMS, we see the patient run immediately into that torsades. That's the first thing that we saw, what we see, or the, or the polymorphic VTAC, and we're quick to call it torsades. But the reality is in order to formally diagnose the torsades, we need to see an underlying 12 lead. So some examples for you back to the original case. What am I talking about exactly here? And then we can see it in, in the rhythm to, uh, in the lead to, I'm sorry, rhythm strip at the bottom. We can see the QT interval. QT interval starts here, runs all the way till it's here. And a good rule of thumb is that if the ST segment or T wave runs more than halfway between an R to R interval, so here's an R, here's an R, so about the halfway point, if that ST segment or T wave exceeds that halfway point, that's a good eyeball measurement for a prolonged QT. Now, I don't have the QT here, the measured QT interval for this patient specifically, but we can still eyeball it. Fairly obvious, exceed past, it, past the halfway point of the RR interval. And so most of the time, what does this end up being? It's usually a result of electrolytes. So torsades or patients that have runs of torsades are usually a result of low potassium or low magnesium is the underlying cause. And a lot of times that's a result of medication use or they have GI losses. And so that's something to keep in mind. But the reality, like I had said, is oftentimes when we first place the patient on the monitor, this is the rhythm that we see. And we're quick to call it torsade, but just remember that the rule of thumb is that we need to see that prolonged QT interval to call it torsades. If not, we can assume that sometimes it is also a result of acute coronary syndrome. Patients with cardiac ischemia will have runs of polymorphic VTAC. It is not torsades just a result of acute coronary syndrome. So it all relies on what that QT interval does in order to make that diagnosis. Now, a lot of people are going to ask, is MAG safe? What if patients have acute coronary syndrome? Yes, the magnesium is safe. We can just give it, and that's fine. It's not going to be of any harm to the patient. But point to remember, in order to be torsades, you've got to check for the prolonged QT.